Hi everybody, it is Dana. It is uh, noon on Friday, January 14th, and this is the first live call that's part of the Healthy Hormone Reset. So if you're not following along, most of the content is being delivered in these big, juicy emails that will help you with menopause. Uh, you can join at danalavoielac.com forward slash 2022 um, to make sure that you get uh, access to all those emails. But on today's live call, I want to do two things. One, I want to answer your questions. So anything that's come up in the reset so far, just type it into the comments uh, for this post or this event, and I will answer it for you. And then I also wanted to talk about two things because this week what we talked about was first the four main choices for managing your hormones during menopause right to me the big four that are easy to do at home that are accessible are diet lifestyle herbal remedies and hormone replacement therapy so i talked about all four the pros and cons of each one when to choose which one what they can do what they can't do that kind of thing but today i want to talk about out of those four ways of managing your hormones during menopause, which one sets you up the best for healthy aging? And I specifically want to talk about vaginal dryness because it's something they get asked about a lot. And I also want to talk uh, a little bit about you like you have hot flashes and then they get better, but then like years later they come back. Why do they come back and what do you do about them? Do you treat them the same way then that you did when they happened in the middle of menopause? Okay, so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. I'm gonna to be answering your questions. I'm gonna be talking about my special two-part solution for vaginal dryness and some other things about healthy aging, but I also, anything that's come up in the reset so far that you wanna ask about your hormones. And if you're joining me live, I would really appreciate it if you could just pop in the comments and say hi. Let me know your name and where you're joining me from. I love the feeling of community. And just let me know for sure that you can see and hear what I'm saying so I, so I know. Um, and I'm gonna be looking out for your comments during this whole video because I'd really, really love to chat with you and answer questions. I've been writing these long emails all week with all kinds of information. This is our chance to really interact. And so I'm just gonna make sure that I have um, all the places where people are typing in comments pulled up and then I'm gonna dive right in and I'm gonna start with vaginal dryness. So who wants to hear about solutions for that? <laughs> um, it's something I get asked about all the time. And like I said, I'm just sorting out my comments. Please pop in and say hi. Let me know where you're joining me from. And uh, okay, so here we go. So in terms of vaginal dryness, there are two ways that I feel like it's really important to treat it. I don't feel like either one alone is a complete solution, but if you use them together, they work really, really well. And I have worked with so many women on this, women who come to me with, um, ah, Shannon says, uh, she's here, awesome, using my daughter's Facebook. Okay, so it's Davina, great. And Sharon from California, I'm so glad you guys are here. Please feel free to pop your questions in the comments. And um, I'd love to talk with you about all kinds of stuff. Davina, I think you might have asked me a question um, in the comments earlier, which I answered thinking you were Shannon. So I sent Shannon a message inside the members area with the answer to your question. So just contact me through, because I believe you're in my uh, program, contact me through the program, the members area, or send me an email with that question um, about that uh, specific issue that you were having. And um, if you don't see my message already. Okay, um, and anything else that comes up? Randy, hi from Indiana. Ooh, welcome. What's the weather like in Indiana today? I have to say the Pacific Northwest, it is watery sunshine and absolutely beautiful. And um, we're in the middle of a, a garden re project, which is really exciting for January. So, okay, let's talk about vaginal dryness. So, like I was saying, there's two things you wanna do simultaneously, okay? And I have used this method successfully with so many women, with women who have vaginal dryness and atrophy to the point of having recurrent UTIs or even the friability of the tissue to the point of bleeding. Uh, and so if you're having dryness, just know that 
it can progress. It can get worse. It can turn into recurrent UTIs or bleeding, friability, a lot of discomfort, or even trouble with the vaginal ecosystem and, you know, inflammation or yeast infection. So it really is good to address it. I mean, not only does it feel better if you address it, but it can actually prevent health problems to make sure that you don't get too much dryness or too much atrophy. Um, Randy says it's very cold in Indiana. I'm not surprised. I, I used to live in New England, so I know what cold winters are like. Uh, I just don't miss them very much. <laughs> uh, okay, so the two-part solution for vaginal dryness is one, right? You're going to plump up the tissues from the inside out with internal remedies that raise your hormone levels systemically, right? That help raise your hormone levels systemically. I'm going to talk about how to do that. The second part is you moisturize those tissues from the outside in with topical moisturizers and topical estrogenic treatments, which can be totally plant-based, um, but is also really, really helpful. And so it's this two-part inside out and outside in method that I find works the best. Even using like an estrogen cream, I mean, yeah, it's gonna help, but it's not a complete solution. Whereas when you add the internal remedies as well, all of a sudden you start to see really big relief. Um, like I remember a woman who came to me who had had the UTIs due to this and she had had you know, a UTI, gone on antibiotics to treat it, it got better and then you know, six weeks later she got another one and she'd been through this cycle like four or five times. It was just, it was untenable. Those antibiotics are so hard on your system, on your digestive health. So she was really having a lot of trouble with this. And what I did is I put her on remedies to help keep the UTIs at bay while we used the remedies for plumping from the inside out. Those take about six months to really kick in, but once they did, the UTIs totally resolved. They just stopped coming back. So we were able to keep them at bay, but then after that six months, we didn't have to do anything because it was plumped from the inside out. So that's really the point you wanna to get to. So what are the remedies you use to plumb from the inside out? And what are the remedies you use to moisturize from the outside in? So from the inside out, the problem inside is that your hormone levels have changed and they've dropped too low. Hormones, estrogen, right? plumps up your vaginal tissue. When those hormones drop too low, a lot of things start to happen. I mean, your hair can fall out, your skin can get dry and saggy, and all kinds of signs of aging can appear. One of them is vaginal dryness. Plus you can get other dryness. You can get dry hair, dry skin, dry eyes, dry mouth, dry tendons that can lead to, to frozen shoulder. So plumping from the inside out is going to help with all those things, but it's going to allow your body to feed the tissues in the vaginal area. So not only are they going to get a little bit plumped, plumped they're going to get more resilient, they're going to get thicker, they're going to get stronger, they're going to get healthier. Um, it's really, really, really good. Takes time to work, but it works. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. One is with hormone replacement therapy that will help to raise the hormones systemically through your whole body. Some women like to do that, some women don't. I feel like there's nothing wrong with it. It can be good. You just want to work with a really good practitioner. But my go-to, because I'm an herbalist and my time is spent helping women use customized herbal remedies, is herbal remedies. And the remedies for this are quite specific, um, but they vary from woman to woman because there's a number of reasons those hormones could have fallen too low. It could be because you're just experiencing aging due to genetics and your body has trouble making hormones and you know they just you just need help making more hormones it could be because something is getting in the way of your body being able to make those hormones it could be stress it could be a liver issue it could be a detoxification issue it could be poor gut health there are a whole slew of reasons that these hormone levels can drop low usually it's a combination of one or more so you need to find the herbal remedies that are customized for you but geared towards vaginal health and vaginal moisture so i'm i'm not going to give you specific remedies because they will work for like two out of 10 of you. Whereas if you get the ones that are customized for your body, they will work for nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10 of you in my experience. So if you want more help with that, let me know. I have a free class where I talk all about herbal remedies, how to work with me, how to find those you know, quickly and easily. Um, it works really, really well. So if you wanna use herbal remedies, it's totally worth getting some expert help and finding the right ones because that's what makes all the difference. 
same thing with hormones. If you want to do that, find an expert who's really good um, and do that. And my two cents on that is, in my experience, women who use hormone replacement therapy get better results and less side effects if they use that in conjunction with herbs that helps with the stress and the liver function and the detoxification and all the potential side effects that can happen with hormones. So um, that's number one, plumping from the inside out. You've got to get those hormone levels where you want them to be because after menopause, during menopause, your hormone levels drop and they get to their postmenopausal levels. Like imagine you have a bucket, right? And it's supposed to be filled with hormones. When you're in your 20s, it's filled up to this line that's near the top of your bucket. After menopause, it's supposed to be filled up to this line that's maybe like a third full, but you want it that whole third full. You want your hormones up to that line that says like postmenopausal up to here, right? And what often happens is they drop way below that. They drop almost to zero. We just need to bring them up to that postmenopausal high and so many health issues are going to resolve. So that is one thing. If you skip that, you're never going to get the complete resolution that you want. Um, and if you need help with that, let me know. The other thing that you can do, which is even more accessible, is to moisturize from the outside in. And this is just so, so helpful. It helps you get results faster. It helps you feel better while the internal remedies are kicking in. It can give a ton of relief and it can just give your body some help where it needs it. And there are a number of ways you can go here. You can use moisturizers, sort of like hand cream for your vaginal tissues, right? It can be something like jojoba oil or coconut oil um, that you apply not just like as a lube when you need it, but every day as a moisturizer. Um, and there are some products like there's a company called Living Libations. They have this really fun product called uh, a petal potion and they have one, a passion petal potion, which is just natural oils with really high quality essential oils that have estrogenic properties that have some natural phytoestrogens. So it's sort of like the most natural way that you can get some plant estrogen activity to directly to those tissues because they're really good at absorbing hormones, which is why you can use, you know, uh, creams that have estrogen in them. Another thing that I really like to do that I have some pretty um, detailed protocols for and products for in my online herbs program is suppositories. There are some great companies that make suppositories you can use vaginally. Some of them are just coconut oil or just cocoa butter just for moisturizing, like I said, like that hand cream. Some of them have some additional ingredients that are hormone specific. One of the more natural ways to go is with something called DHEA. And the nice thing about DHEA is it can be naturally derived. Um, it does like occur naturally. And what it is is a hormone precursor. So it's not telling your body like, here's a load of estrogen, deal with it, right? It's just saying, here is like a, a blank hormone template, do with it what you want. And your body can make estrogen out of it really easily. Your body can even make testosterone out of it really easily. So your body can just sort of take that to make whatever hormone it needs really, really easily. Uh, and there you'll find products out there that are um, vaginal treatments that have DHEA in them. And it's there's studies and all kinds of studies that show that it can help with all of these dryness and friability and tissue thinning options um, that we've been talking about. And then you can get into some products that also have a little bit more than DHEA that are a little bit more specific that have like estriol in them or a progesterone estriol blend. So we're talking the most natural bioidentical type of these um, hormones, which I feel like is better than something that was just created in a lab or definitely than some of the ones that came from you know, horse urine, you don't want to use that. Um, but there are some really natural forms of these uh, hormonal molecules that can be applied with the vaginal suppository that are quite natural and quite safe. And the protocols are like you use them more often for a few weeks and then it's just once or twice a week. It's for maintenance. And along with the internal therapies, it can just make you feel so great. And so this combination of the internal therapies and the external moisturizers at whatever level you feel comfortable with, at whatever level you need, um, I find is really, really helpful. Uh, and of course, I'm not gonna go into it here. It's not the topic of today's 
talk, but one thing that I do talk about sometimes is, you know, great sex after 50. I have like a whole series of blog articles on that. And of course, this is going to help with that. And um, the internal remedies can be modified both for dryness and for low libido to help with that. And even with like completion of orgasm. So there's all kinds of help available if you need it. So if you guys have questions about this, please put them in the comments. I'd love to answer them for you. And another thing I wanted to talk about today was what do you do when you have hot flashes and they go away for a while? Maybe you took some herbs, maybe you took some remedies, maybe you took some hormones, maybe you just got to the end of menopause And the hot flashes basically went away. And then a year later, or five years later, or 10 years later, the hot flashes come back. What is going on with that? What can you do about it? And how do you treat those hot flashes differently than the ones you had in the first place? And I just want to say that this theory applies to more than just hot flashes. You can actually use it for any hormonal symptom that you had for a while due to menopause that goes away and then comes back, okay? Because it's the same underlying thing that's happening that's causing that and the same approach to dealing with it. So I wanna talk about two scenarios for this. The first one is you have hot flashes, you do something that works. You took a supplement or an herb or hormones, you take something that works and they go away. And then a year later, you're still in the middle of menopause. They come back, they're worse than ever, and the thing you were doing before is not helping at all. The second thing I want to talk about is you're in menopause, you have hot flashes, and either you get to the end of menopause or you take something and they get better. And then like years later, when you're basically done with menopause, you're past menopause, you're not having really menopause stuff happening anymore, all of a sudden you start getting hot flashes or night sweats again. Okay, what's going on with that? So the first one, when you the hot flashes get better for a while, for a few weeks or a few months or maybe even a year, but then you're still in menopause and they're back and that whatever you were doing isn't working anymore. More. I wanna talk about that first and then we'll talk about the ones that come back really when you're into post-menopause. So during menopause, your hormones are changing. They're all, there's all, there's progesterone and estrogen and testosterone. There's stress hormones, thyroid hormones, metabolism hormones, blood sugar hormones. There's so many hormones and believe me, they are all changing. Your stress response changes. The amount of stomach acid and digestive enzymes you make changes, right? Like everything changes as your female hormones change because your hormones are like dominoes. You change one and there's a cascade reaction where they all change. They're very interrelated. So during menopause, your hormones change. They go from higher to lower, your female hormones. But there's different ones and they change at different speeds and they reach different thresholds at different times. So you might get hot flashes at first because like one hormone dropped a little bit low and you address that, but then later you get hot flashes because a different hormone dropped low. And, and that's why the, hot, the treatment that worked for the hot flashes at the beginning aren't working for hot flashes a year later. I had a woman, her name was Amy, who came to see me. She had this exact experience. You know, she had terrible hot flashes. She was very knowledgeable about natural supplements. She took some herbs and it worked really well. She was hot flash free. But then about a year later, the hot flashes came back and they were worse than ever. They were terrible. They were all day and all night. And she had them for over a year before she met me and nothing, nothing worked to make them better. Even the herbs she had taken before did not work. So I said, oh, well, those were sort of like the kind of hot flashes you get in very early menopause when, you know, progesterone is dropping and you might be having PMS issues and all this. But now you're like farther along in the menopause process. You need a different remedy. That's why when it comes to remedies, it's not like if you have hot flashes, you take this herb, or if you have hot flashes, you take this hormone even, because there are different hormonal imbalances that can cause hot flashes, and you need the one that is matched with your body and your stage of menopause. So what it comes, what the bottom line is that you need to update whatever you're doing and figure out a way to match it up with what your body needs at this point in time. So it doesn't surprise me at all when you take something for hot flashes, it works great, and then three, six, 12, 24 months later, it stops working. You need to update what you're taking. 
to match where your hormones are at now. So that's just really, really normal actually. Um, and as an herbalist, that's what I do all the time. I help women learn how to update their herbs every time their symptom changes or every time their stage of menopause changes. That's why those herbs are customized. That's why they work so well, as opposed to just buying some hot flash remedy off the shelf, totally hit or miss whether it's what you need right then. Um, and same thing with hormone replacement therapy, it's gonna change. Uh, and of course, it could be that your body's doing great, but there's just like something in your diet. You know, sometimes you just stop drinking alcohol because that's a hot flash trigger. Sometimes that's enough. But when it's really severe, I find that's usually not enough. You need something stronger that's customized. Um, and I find the herbs, they're so natural, they're so safe, they're so wonderful, they work so well. I just want women to all have access to them, which is why I do what I do. Um, and then I want to, now I want to talk about postmenopause because this is about healthy aging. Um, and let me just go back for a minute to talk about the hot flashes. I know there's a lot of things out there about like special sheets and cooling nightgowns and fans you can have blowing on yourself at night, peppermint sprays and all, all these like cooling therapies. And I want to tell you why I don't particularly like cooling therapies for hot flashes at menopause. In my system of herbalism, okay, which is Chinese herbal medicine, which if you do some reading, you will find works so well for menopause that like most women who grow up in Asia or China and they just know how to use these herbal remedies. They're like, why is everyone complaining so much about menopause? It's not that big of a deal, right? Because these remedies work so well. But in the system of herbalism that I use, hot flashes are not caused by too much heat in your body. I know that sounds weird. I know it feels like there's too much heat in your body and there could be a little bit too much heat, but in general, hot flashes that come and go in flashes and that are worse than night, at night are not caused by too much heat in your body. And so if you do a lot of cooling therapies, you're actually draining away heat energy that you're supposed to have. This is why you get hot flashes without having too much heat in your body. Your body has watery substances and fiery substances. Think of these as your hormones, your female hormones and your male hormones, okay? So female hormones are cooling, and juicy and moisturizing and grounding. And then your hot energy, your fiery energy, your male hormones, this is the spark, the libido, the metabolism, the fire, the motivation. It's hot, it's fiery, it's like woohoo. <laughs> keeps your bones strong, keeps your libido high, helps you maintain muscle. It helps you have energy and inspiration. It is really important to have enough fire energy. So what happens in menopause is all of a sudden your water energy drops, your female hormones drop, okay? Now you get hot flashes. Did the amount of heat in your body increase? No, it did not. You're still supposed to have all that nice fire energy for a lot of things. The problem is that now your fire and your water don't match. All you need to do is bring your water up to match your fire and the hot flashes will go away, but you'll still have a lot of energy. If what you do instead is cooling, 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 you bring your fire down to match your water, now everything's low. Now you're gonna get the dryness from the low water and you're gonna get the low libido from the low fire. You're gonna get the, um, you know, like all the symptoms, all the signs of aging of the low female hormones and all the signs of aging of the low male hormones. So you end up low on everything by using cooling therapies. Whereas if you bring up your watery energy, bring up your female hormones, you'll get rid of the hot flashes, but you'll end up having prevented so many signs of aging by keeping what we call your jing, your water and fire energy and your hormone levels higher. So um, that is something that most women don't think about. They're just like, I'm so hot, cool me down. But actually what you want is to keep your energy and get rid of the hot flashes. So this ties right into what happens when hot flushes come back when you're well into postmenopause, okay? In postmenopause, your hormones do tend to stabilize. Whatever level they find postmenopausally, they tend to stabilize. And so if your hot flashes go away, they stabilize with fire and water pretty even. For women whose hot flashes never go away, like they have them in menopause and they still have them 15 years later, your hormones stabilized out of balance with a little too much fire and not enough water. And a little tweaking will often get rid of those hot flashes even 15 years later. If your hot flashes went away, but then later they came back, it just means that something happened down the road that caused your whatever amount of female hormones you had 
to drop again and now fire and water are out of balance and this can happen for a number of reasons it can happen just as a natural part of the aging process depending on your genetics some women are more prone to this it can also happen because your body is making these female hormones still even postmenopausally, and something happened that caused your body to make less of them and a common cause of this is stress i mean it's it's covid we've all got so much going on Postmenopausally, your ovaries are doing a lot less and your adrenal glands actually step in and take over starting to make some of your female hormones for you. But your adrenal glands also make your stress hormones. So if you're constantly stressed out and they're always making stress hormones, the factory never gets to switch over to making female hormones. And over time, you're gonna have less female hormones. Plus high stress hormone levels actually sort of eat up some of your female hormones. There's like an inverse relationship between stress hormones and those watery female cooling hormones. So you could just be five years, 10 years into postmenopause, you haven't been having hot flashes and your stress level increases and all of a sudden you have hot flashes again. So it just means your body needs help bringing those female hormones and that watery energy back up again to balance out your fire. Um, and it could be that you wanna do things that are hormonally related, but it could mean that you just wanna focus on managing stress and bringing your stress hormone levels down and spending more time not in a fight or flight state and your body will naturally make those hormones again. So for some women, they need help with the hormonal part. For some women, they need more help with the stress part. You find the right solution and boom, you get the best results. Um, and there are other things that can cause those hormone levels to drop suddenly in postmenopause. You could be drinking more alcohol or eating more hot spicy food or you could not be eating you could be eating less of the things that help your body make female hormones like flax seeds and healthy fats you know maybe you just got lazy about your diet or you know you moved or you're in a new relationship and someone else is doing the cooking um so there are a number of different reasons why this can happen when you find the reason why it happened for you it's pretty easy to adjust so um not to worry too much. I mean, if the if your hot flashes come back 10 years into postmenopause, of course you wanna check with your doctor to make sure that they're not for some other reason. There are other things in the world that can cause hot flashes. A common one is side effect from medication. You could have started a new medication. The vast majority of medications, a common side effect is to decrease that watery energy. This is really, really common side effect of medications. Think of like, um, a really strong medication like chemotherapy, what do you get? Hot flashes. You know, it's like, but a lot of medications have that as a milder side effect. And so there's so many reasons why that could have happened. Um, and you can, uh, even if you do have to stay on that medication, maybe now your body just needs help bringing the hormones up. Whereas before it was doing okay, now it needs extra help. So there's lots of ways to, uh, reasons it can happen and lots of ways to address it. But it just means that something is causing you know, increased fire in your body. You can get too much heat if you have an infection or inflammation. The thing about heat from too much heat is you feel hot all the time, day, night, all the time. If it comes and goes in flashes and it's worse at night, that's the heat that comes from not enough water, not enough female hormones. So that's how you can tell the difference. Um, it, and that's when you don't wanna use necessarily the cooling therapies. So this is sort of um, how we look at managing hormones. Um, is alcohol something that really needs to be avoided if you're daily incorporating many healthy foods and habit? Does it greatly worsen hot flashes? So this is such a great question, Davina. Um, and the question is, it's totally individual. So what I say is, I always recommend changing your diet at first by adding the good things in, okay? Like you said, you're um, incorporating many healthy foods and habits. You're managing stress. You're eating the healthy fats and the protein and the superfoods and you know, keeping your blood sugar even by the way you eat and you have a healthy digestive system. So th for some women, that will be enough. They will make enough hormones, right? that they can drink alcohol, say alcohol takes away a few hormones, but they still have enough left. So you have no symptoms and you feel fine. That's great. If you drank 10 times as much alcohol, it might take away so many hormones that you would start to have symptoms and not feel great. It all could also be that you're doing everything right with your diet and your lifestyle and your herbs, 
but your hot flashes are still not under control. So if you're doing everything right and your hot flashes are still not under control, that's when I would recommend, right? So you added all the good stuff in, it wasn't enough. That's when I would recommend, well, stop the alcohol, see if the hot flashes go away. If two months later, you're totally hot flash free and the only change you made was not drinking the alcohol, it just means that right now at this moment in time, for your body, it's able to make enough hormones, but not to make enough extra for the amount you lose to the alcohol. So it partly just depends on you and your body. Some some women's bodies struggle to make like, say five hormones, and other women's can make 50, right? So it depends on your genetics and some other things like that. Um, but then it also depends on how much alcohol you're drinking. If it's like one drink a week, then you know your body's going to have an easier time counteracting that. If it's like six drinks a day, it's going to be a lot harder for your body to counteract that. So like I said, add the good stuff in first because it's always easier with your diet to just add stuff in, right? But then if that's not enough, start taking things away. It's the same thing with caffeine. Like if you're having a lot of trouble sleeping during menopause, that is a serious issue. We need our sleep. So do all the things to help you sleep. Okay, and if you start sleeping, great. But if you are still not sleeping, cut out caffeine because even a half a cup of coffee in the early morning can mess up your hormonal sleep cycle in the middle of the night. And so stop the caffeine when the sleep is really, really good or the hot flashes are really, really gone, then experiment. So if you cut out the alcohol, the hot flashes went away, and then try reintroducing it. Try a half a drink once a week. If you don't get any hot flashes back, try one drink once a week. If you don't get any hot flashes back, you know, try a half a drink twice a week. You know, like you just slowly increase and see where's the point where your body can handle it and be symptom free. Um, and sometimes you can take twice as many herbs and then you're able to have that drink and that works better for you. You're willing to do more to build up your watery energy so that you can afford to lose a little bit, right? So it just really depends on your body. Some of our bodies have an easier time with this. Some of our bodies have a harder time with this. Um, and, and it depends on, like I said, stress levels and the health of your digestive system and, and all kinds of other things too. Um, she says, I love a good martini. Yeah. And, and, and if you're doing enough healthy things and you're like, well, if I just take a larger dose of herbs all week long, then I can have a martini twice a week and I don't get any symptoms from it. Cool. You know, you're handling it and that's great. Um, but it, when the symptoms are like out of control and you're doing everything right, that's when I say, well, try stopping and let's get it under control first. And there's a reason for that. When you're walking around with a lot of hormonal symptoms, like a lot of hot flashes, a lot of insomnia, a lot of increased anxiety, a lot of increased weight gain, that it's caused by the hormonal imbalances of menopause, it's a sign. It's a really clear message from your body saying your hormones are out of balance. They're not happy, okay? And that puts you in a position where disease can set in. Okay, much more easily. Okay, you're vulnerable to 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 frozen shoulder. You're vulnerable to dementia. You're vulnerable to so many things when your hormones are out of balance. So if you're having a lot of hormonal symptoms, I strongly encourage you to be proactive and figure out what it's going to take to get your hormones where they need to be so you're not having hormonal symptoms. And like I said, start with adding things in. Add in the right diet, add in the right lifestyle. And if that's not enough, add in the right herbal remedies. Give that three months. If that's not enough, you know, consider hormone replacement or not. Take twice as many herbs, but like keep figuring out what it's gonna take to get you feeling really well and basically symptom-free. If you know you get a hot flash once a day that's like, was that a hot flash? You know, it's so mild that it comes and goes. There's no sweating. It's just like, fuck, that's fine, okay? But if you're sweating through your clothes and waking up five times a night soaking wet, that's too much. That's not good preventative wellness. It's leaving you vulnerable to disease. Figure out what it's going to take to get your hormones happy, to get feeling better, to get pretty much symptom-free. Um, and then you can sort of experiment with you know how much fun can i have how much how far can i push the limits and still feel really really well as long as you feel really really well 
um, and things are looking good, then, you know, your body's tolerating it. And that's the goal, right? That's the ultimate goal is to whatever stressors come your way, whether it's alcohol, whether it's COVID, whether it's hormonal changes, whether whatever it is, your body can handle it. It can adjust. It can metabolize it, right? That's the goal. It's just when things get out of balance and we're not handling it that we have to backtrack. Um, so yeah, there's no reason you can't have it as long as your body is handling it. So you either have to give your body enough help or you already are. Um, and so it's not like, I'm not like everybody has to stop drinking. No, but if your hot flashes are out of control to the point where you, you can't think and you can't concentrate and you can't sleep, you've got to do what it takes to get that more under control. Um, and sometimes that means cutting out alcohol for a time or really, really reducing it long term for some women whose bodies just really have a hard time with those hormones. Um, so, or it could be that just for six months while stress is really high, you need to drink a lot less because you can't handle it. And when stress resolves, you find, gosh, all of a sudden, you know, because stress was eating up your hormones, when that stops happening, you can have a drink instead, maybe, you know. And of course, I don't want to be lighthearted about this because I know for people who are what I consider allergic to alcohol, right, who are alcoholic, then there are other reasons for you not to drink alcohol, of course, because it sets off a series of chemical reactions in your body that's completely different than what other people might experience. And so, of course, in that situation, everything has to be based on what's best for you. And if you're allergic to alcohol, if you're alcoholic, it um, could be better choice not to drink at all. But for some women, um, it can be okay to drink in moderation. Uh, their body can handle it hormonally. So I hope that answers your question. Does anybody else have any questions? Um, I would love to answer them for you. And for anyone who hasn't signed up, I'm doing a, I'm calling it the Healthy Hormone Reset to kind of get going um, for 2022 being a great year, being the year you can reach health goals you thought were never going to happen. And I'm doing it mostly by email. I'm sending out emails that have really a lot of specific content in them that's really, really useful. And you can join for free uh, at danalaboislaccom forward slash 2022. Uh, and there's a link on my Facebook page and a link in my Instagram bio. Um, and you'll get the emails and I'll send you links to the past emails. And there's this live call. I'm doing a live call next Friday as well. The second week of the reset is all about diet. So I'm really excited about that. And then a week from tomorrow, so Saturday to end the reset, not this Saturday, excuse me, but next Saturday, I'm going to be doing a special Zoom call just for women who are in the reset. You will only get the link to the Zoom call if you're getting the emails for the reset. So it'll be an intimate conversation in a safe place in a closed environment where you can actually come on the screen with me and chat one-on-one -on -one about your situation. So that's just for women who have joined the reset. So I'm really excited about it all. I'm having so much fun with it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you're looking for health and community and support to help you get through menopause or post-menopause, um, I do have an online program called Menopause Made Easy with Herbs that has an amazing community an herbal coaching program associated with it and uh, you can learn all about it about my style of herbalism about how the program works you can get a special invitation to join with a bonus package um, and three months of working directly with me for free and all kinds of great stuff uh, at danalavoislaccom forward slash masterclass. That is free and you can learn all about working with me there. But in the meantime, I hope that these tips have been helpful. I'm Dana Lavoie. I'm an acupuncturist and herbalist and online herbal coach. I've been helping women through menopause for about 20 years in my private practice and online programs. Uh, and I am absolutely passionate about helping you feel amazing during menopause and using all the secrets of Chinese medicine combined with the great stuff that functional medicine is coming up with currently to really, really choose your experience of aging and experience this vital, healthy aging that is so much fun. So if you would like to join me on that journey, get in touch and I will help you figure out how to get started. I'm so glad that you joined me here today. Uh, let me see if there's anywhere else I can check to see if there were... Um, some any other uh, comments that came in. I'm just gonna check over on Facebook. I'm not like the most expert at doing these lives and sometimes comments come in 
in a different place from where I'm expecting. So I'm just going to check one other place to make sure there weren't any other questions coming in. And then I'm going to wrap it up. And of course, I'll be back next Friday and be sure to join the reset um, so that you're getting those emails and get the invite to that Zoom call as well. Okay, sorry, just checking these comments one more time. I always like to make sure that I answer all your questions. Okay, I think I'm good. I will see you guys next week. I will see you on the emails. You can just send me a message or contact me if you um, have a question or want to get in touch. And I'm so glad you were here today. And uh, I will see you soon. Have a great weekend. Another thing that I'm just doing currently right now, if you're interested, um, I'm in the middle of a big remodel project in my garden. And in Chinese medicine, menopause is known as the second spring, and it can be this renaissance of creative energy, of vitality, of new things happening in your life, and also a sexual renaissance. And there's so much happening in my life right now that feels that way, and I feel like this garden project is sort of like a symbol of it. So every Saturday, I'm going to be popping onto Instagram with an update on how it's going with the garden remodel. Also, I love gardening, but I'm not super expert. So I, if any of you are expert gardeners, please feel free to pop on and give me some gardening advice. Um, so I'll be on there tomorrow. We are renting an excavator tomorrow. So it's going to be a big, muddy, messy day. And I will show you some, sh some sh uh, shots of that. So feel free to follow along on that if you're interested. Uh, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.